Hello everyone. Um, it's been a while since I yacked my opinions into a camera. So, um, yeah, it's been quite a while. So I figured today would be super casual in my backyard since I had to move back from university. Um, today's really casual in my backyard talking about four books that I read and well, three books that I've read and one that I am reading. Um, so I'm going to talk about If Cats Disappeared from the World by Genki Kawamura, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, um, The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury, and The Night is Short Walk on Girl by Tomihiko Morimi. And these are four books that I was reading during quarantine and they have helped me keep my sanity. So anyway, the first one that I mentioned was If Cats Disappeared from the World by Genki Kawamura. And this one, I found it through a totally random Audible ad. Um, and I bought the book and just on a whim and I, I read it and I finished it in like two days. It is so good. It's amazing. It's like kind of a fairy tale sort of thing about this like postman who discovers that he's a brain tumor. He doesn't have long to live. And when he gets home from the doctor's office, he's greeted by like a doppelganger of himself who calls himself the devil and like makes a deal with him saying that if he can erase if he lets the devil erase one thing from existence every day he'll get one more day to live and so like the first day it's like cell phones then it's movies and then it's clocks and then well i'll leave the rest up to you you can read it and it's just a really good like kind of like i said fairy tale type story about um just like like what you're willing to give up how the world changes if you take away one tiny thing and even though it's like kind of like the premise like i described it sounds kind of dark it's actually like just really charming it's very sweet it's very touching and it also has some really funny moments in it you know good authors can take some like a, a dark story and have like naturally occurring like lightheartedness come into it so that was really good I love that book it's definitely one of my favorites and I wholeheartedly recommend it um, the second book that I'm talking about is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams classic sci-fi right um, this was recommended to me by one of my friends at school who's read it um, and I'd heard of it I'd seen the mini series and I saw the movie and like I really liked it I didn't know if I would like the book but I read the book and guess what I loved it it was hilarious the writing just had this kind of like pop sizzle crackle to it that was really entertaining to read and um like the characters like you know Arthur and Ford get the most page time but everyone else just they also pop off the page like they feel so real and immediate like they're your buddies and I just love the overall tone it's so crazy and like the shenanigans they get into it's just really good and it's very short um, there's more books of it I I'd like to read so it's just it's um it was definitely worth it I actually bought it I'm an RA and I was um, thinking I was gonna be staying on campus till the end of the semester even though everyone else was going home because RAs were considered for like two days that we would be staying, but turns out they send us all home too. So I thought that I was gonna need like a lot of books to get me through like living on a basically deserted campus. And so I chose this one over The Shining uh, for obvious reasons. So yeah, it, it very near and dear now. So the next one is one that I'm actually currently reading and that is The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. Ray Bradbury is, I've mentioned before, one of my absolute favorite writers just ever. It doesn't matter the genre. If you ask me for like top three favorite writers, Ray Bradbury will be in there no matter if we're talking about sci-fi, horror, fantasy, whatever. He's just really good. Um, and The Halloween Tree is one of the first things I read by him. I read it when I was a kid because it's like, you know, it's like, Ray Bradbury doesn't get like super adult, but like, most of his stories you have to be older to fully get them but I read this one when I was a kid and I just loved it it's about um, a bunch of boys who are going trick-or-treating on Halloween and they're all dressed up and everything but their friend Pippin, Pipkin not Pippin <laughs> their friend Pipkin has like been spirited away 
And so they team up with this weird, like really mystical dude, Mr. Mound Shroud, who takes them on like a journey through Halloween history so they can find and rescue their friend. And it's so crazy. And like every page of this book reads like it's free verse poetry. It's so cool. I love it. It's just, it's taking me a long time to get through it because it's like, I want to savor every word of it. I don't want to like rush through it. It's so good. So the last book is one, is the one that I finished the longest time ago and I keep looking down because I'm reading my notes off my phone. Because <laughs> I don't trust myself to go without a script. <laughs> so the last, the last one is The Night of Short Walk on Girl by Tomihiko Morimi. Um, this author is also the author of Penguin Highway, which is one of my just all-time favorite books ever. Um, it's nothing short of a masterpiece. So you always feel like going into another one of the author's works after you read like something that good. You're always a little nervous, but I have to say this one, it did not feel like anything less. Like it was a little less serious. Like there wasn't, like the stakes weren't as high, but it was like, somehow it was like just as exciting. It had just much gravity when you were reading it. Um, it's about, um, it has two narrators, one and they're, um, it's a boy and a girl. And in this book, like some of the characters, like the narrators aren't given like names. They're kind of like, I feel like that's something a lot in modern literature. Like I could talk about it in another video, like how the, the narrator characters sometimes don't have names, but that's not what we're here to talk about. See, this is why I don't trust myself without a script because I sound completely insane and incoherent. But anyway, so they're the two narrator characters. Um, one's a guy, one's a girl, and the um, guy really wants to ask her out on a date, but he is really shy about it. But it's not only the fact that he's shy that keeps him from asking her out. Whenever he gets the chance, there's like these weird cosmic forces, these weird crazy situations or coincidences that come out of nowhere and stop him from being able to do that. And it's like, there are four sections to the book and each one covers like a different season and a different crazy situation that happens. Like the first one is um, they're both out on it. They're both out night on the town kind of thing. Um, the girl's at a wedding party and she gets bored and decides to go bar hopping. And um, the guy's also in the neighborhood and it, it, it kind of the POV kind of ping pongs back and forth between them. And um, it's just crazy stuff happens. I can't even like describe it. I would need 20 minutes to fully describe how crazy this book is. It's very surreal. It's very like Dada-esque, but it draws you in so completely. So if you don't mind things being super off the wall and crazy, do yourself a favor and read it because it pulls you in. It's very moving. It's very sweet. Despite how crazy it is, the characters are superhuman. Not like Superman, superhuman. I mean like they're very human, whatever. <laughs> so it's just, it's very much worth the read. And I really hope that more of this author's works are made more widely available. Cause it's like, he's amazing. I've only read two of his books and I, 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 I want to read more of them. And, and as much as I wish I could say that I was a hyper-intelligent polyglot, I cannot read in Japanese. And so, just please, please translate the Tatami Galaxy. I really want to read it. Or it's probably translated, but I just can't find it anywhere. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking now. Now I'm staring off camera because my cat's sleeping in the grass over there. She's really cute. So, um, yeah, that's it. Those are four books that I've been reading. Um... I want to do a video on something a little bit different next time. Um, I, w um, I watch, I've been watching two shows that are very similar to each other, but have some key differences, um, you and Dexter. And I would like to talk about and compare and contrast those two, maybe talk about why I prefer one over the other. But I would actually need to sit out and literally type something. Otherwise, I'd just be rambling in circles. Kind of like I am right now, actually. So anyways, I hope that you're taking care of yourselves and staying okay. Remember, it's you can, you know, take a walk. Put on that mask. Take a walk. Pick yourself up some boba. Treat yourself nice, you know. You deserve good things. And it'll be over when it's over. Anyways, goodbye.
bye. <laughs>